Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? I just want to do a quick check. Hi, it's Terry. I'm so excited uh, to be doing this this weekend. I was kind of sad about uh, a lot of the conventions being closed, and when I was told that we're doing a virtual one, I was really excited, and I'm in, like, super fangirl mode. Thank you so much, uh, Timothy, Frankie, uh, Matt, Snake Strike, uh, Twitch, Twitch Owl, um, Oh my god, there's so many people. I'm so thrilled you are joining me today. I am at maximum fangirl uh, mode because I get to paint. I get to paint minis at a convention, help you guys paint your minis, and I'm always really excited to do that. And uh, I get to get some stuff done out of my own collection, too, which is kind of like a side bonus, which is really great. So we're going to get rolling really quick. We don't have a lot of time in this workshop today. I've got a little bit over an hour and an hour for a single miniature, especially like a character miniature, it can be a little bit challenging. So I'm going to try to show you in this period of time um, how to get from like a, a primed miniature to a finished miniature. We're gonna be covering very basic techniques. We're gonna be doing some basic things. I started on this miniature just to kind of get going because we've got to let paint dry. We've got to get layers on it and base coating can take, you know, a couple layers. So I don't want you to feel at any point as we paint today uh, rushed, right? I'm gonna be hanging out in the Discord over the weekend, painting miniatures. If you have questions, throw them in chat as we do this and um, I'll be able to answer them. If you want to drop by in the Discord, say hi to me. I'll be painting away, posting pictures in various places uh, in there. So if you want to see what's going on, if you want to share your pictures of miniatures you're working on, um, looking for guidance, I'll be there. I also want to shout out the fantastic Renegade Painters Facebook group. If you're not a member of that community already, definitely join it. They're a fantastic community and very supportive and just, just one... One of my favorite places on the internet, can you believe it, is on social media. So it's it's pretty terrific. So um, we're going to start off with this miniature. I've got some base coats down. Now, this is my wet palette. I've had the brown down. I've done a little bit of the brown on the boots, the one of the gloves here, because I'm going to show you how I do my base coats on this arm, um, the blue on the, the legs, and kind of most of the shirt. There's still some black on there if you actually look, because uh, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to show you all of those techniques. But before we get started, normally with a miniature like this, I do dry brushing. Dry brushing is the first thing I usually hit up with my miniatures just because dry brushing is messy. It gets everywhere, but you can cover up all the mess you make uh, with, with the rest of the paint you use. So that's what I'm going to start on. I'm going to show you how I do it, and then you can actually see how messy it gets, where the paint goes, but we'll be covering that up with other paint coats of paint later. So I've got my dry palette, which is actually a glorified old coffee can lid and I'm gonna put some silver paint on there now on the renegade workshop home page you will be able to find like a spy list of what I used on this miniature um, there are color suggestions in terms of the brands and, and what colors within those lines I used but like whatever paint you have if it's miniature paint if it's the right color for you heck if you want to paint this miniature instead of blue green purple orange I'm it's not my miniature it's your miniature so so you know, this is just so that you can have a baseline of what we're doing. Um, and I'm going to put some silver paint on my dry palette. I'm going to take some paper towel, which I have here. Um, and I am going to take my big old dry brush. This is a really big brush, big brush. This is a, still a pretty beefy miniature. Um, but you know, a big brush lets you get done faster. So it, I'm, I'm really a big fan of this, this particular dry brush. Um, and at the end of this workshop, I have a little personal workshop uh, questionnaire. Like, let me know what you like. Let me know what you'd change. What did you learn? Any comments? Uh, there's a little form at the end of this. I'm going to draw from all the people who fill in that questionnaire at the end of our workshop uh, for one of these bra brand new. It's going to be brand new. It's not going to be used. Um, of these old eyeshadow turned dry brushes. Um, I buy them from, from the drugstore and pharmacy. But I'll mail you my favorite dry brush because I think... Uh, that that it's a nice way to say thank you. So yeah, I'll be drawing for someone to win that. So I'm basically putting a little bit of silver on my dry brush and I'm wiping most of it off onto the paper towel. And what that'll do is it'll let me burnish what's left over on the brush onto the miniature. And I'm gonna do his 
his armor now, these little armor bits. It looks like there's basically I'm gonna do his his mace here and his shoulder pads. That's where the most of the silver is. And as you can see, when you do it this way, I'm gonna change the focus just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Up tight here, yeah. It looks burnished when you apply it this way. It actually adds a little bit more of that silver and deposits that silver onto the raised areas as well. So it kind of creates this highlight look. Hello, Tabletop Albert. It's been a long time. It has. I'm so glad you're able to join us here at Renegade Con. Um, so is that a makeup brush? Yes, roll dice take names. Marty, it is a makeup brush. This is my favorite. Oops, I should take a little more off of it. Um, this is my favorite dry brush. It is a makeup brush. It is, it is a, it is an old eyeshadow brush. It costs like four dollars at the drugstore, and it is my favorite dry brush of all time. It just burnishes color onto the miniature in a way, especially for metallics, but just generally that it looks like it's airbrushed. And I, I don't have an airbrush. Uh, it's hard to clean. I've had I've had an airbrush. I find them hard to clean. I'm not good enough at maintenance. I'm a lazy painter. I like things that are done. And honestly, cleaning and maintaining an airbrush is too much commitment for me. But this makeup brush is cheap, and it's not as loud as a compressor. And it 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 gives me a very similar highlighted effect. Um, if you have a dry brush that is is like when you use it, it has these like leaves what looks like chalkiness or scratchiness on your model. Um, a bigger, softer brush will kind of blend that out a little bit. It blends out that chalkiness, that 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 weird result that comes sometimes from from like stiffer, smaller dry brushes. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just basically adding on that silver, moving the brush around. It kind of with the extra bristles on there and the extra paint loaded on, it kind of smooth out, smooths out that that metallic paint. And I'm just gonna get it everywhere. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna do the handle of bone later. So I'm not too stressed. I'm not too worried about um, making sure the silver is where it is. So that's where we're at. Um, question: I'm considering getting started since I have so many games with models. If I mess up, is there an easy way to remove all the paint and start over? Okay. Two things. One. Paint is its own whiteout. Uh, I've said it on a lot of streams. I believe it to my core. Uh, you can paint over it with another paint model. Stripping all the way down and then repainting it up is harder than if you just, you know, you're not happy with something. You can change the color on it, paint, paint over what you've already painted with a different color. So that's usually where I lean to first. When it comes to stripping miniatures, um, I'll, I'll typically just if I have to pull all the paint off of it, let's say a friend gave me some old miniatures, the primer is really thick, like you've, it's hidden the detail, the paint, um, the, the layer that, that is on the model is just too thick. You're hiding the details on the model. I've stripped models successfully, plastic models successfully with a 24 hour soak in a product called Simple Green. Um, and it softens the outside uh, uh, paint layer paint turns to plastic so it, it kind of softens that and then I'll put it in a little jar with a lid uh, put some rubbing alcohol in it and I'll shake the model in that and that force and the solvent nature of the isopropyl alcohol rubbing alcohol um, it dissolves the last of the paints and kind of pulls most of the paint off of the miniature but before you go drastically into like fully stripping models I highly recommend just just try to paint over it uh, a lot of times, especially like you can see it at this stage now, when you're at this stage of the model, oops, ooh, that must have been loud. I'm sorry. When you're at this stage of the model, it looks like a hot mess when you're comparing it to what it could be at the end. Um, sometimes models just need a little more, a little more time, a little more work and it'll get there. So just trust the process a little bit. Um, and so that's the silver. I've got the silver done pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to move off of my dry palette and I'm going to pull away in terms of focus here so you can see a little bit more. I move off my palette, dry palette into my wet palette. So my dry palette was an old coffee, coffee can lid <laughs> and my wet palette's actually like an old chocolate box lid. This is a fur Rocher from Valentine's Day. Um, and I just put a layer of paper towel and I, and I dampened it with water and then I put a layer of baking parchment paper 
on top and that is my wet palette and what this does is it keeps my paints moist it helps me so that I don't have to water down my paints as much because there's moisture on the palette itself and it helps blend a little bit easier so I've got my brown here and I'm gonna start painting on the base coats now when it comes if you're using a dry palette especially but like even when it comes to to these wet palettes a little bit of water you want to thin down your paints a little bit of water in your on your palette will with your paint will make sure that the paint stays thin enough that it doesn't obscure the details so i'm just adjusting the focus a little bit so you can see it a little better and i'm just going to do the base coat on here i'm actually going to take my bigger brush i am a fan of painting with larger brushes uh, i find that you get like i said before you get things done a little bit quicker which is nice um, especially when your end goal is to play and enjoy with your miniatures and so a big brush will help you do that especially with base coats so this is actually a pretty sizable brush it's like a size two out of the brands but like you'll you'll find a lot of if you're picking up your brushes at your hobby store like a, a base coat brush is a pretty sizable brush and you get your base coats down and on fast and it also the larger brush holds more paint so you you can actually can can not dip back into your paint as often so also is a help to get get paint done painting your miniatures done so I'm putting the brown on again I'm not too worried uh, if you look real close here I'm actually over painting the border of the skirt I'm going into where the blue would be uh, I over paint the borders of my miniatures just because if you do you can always meet the paint I can paint over that little excess brown with my blue and then I'll have a perfect border if I try to paint to the just the very edge of where the brown is and then I try to match it with the blue sometimes there's a little line of primer that shows this is a little bit easier to do for me um, when I'm painting miniatures especially if you're starting out and you're not as comfortable with it it's just easier to push up against a border and even if it it's not totally perfect because the colors between the two where they meet match it just looks a little more natural um let's see here is there a specific type of paint that is best to use I use miniature paint and use and I use acrylic paint I use acrylic paint because it thins with water uh, if you use model paint that is uh, enamel you have to have like special solvents for it and I, I can't be bothered with that so I use miniature paint that's acrylics usually non-toxic um, and I can thin it with water and that's that's what I tend to use the, no specific brands I, I a lot of people ask about brands and when it comes to miniature paint brands use what's available to you what's at your local hobby store what's easily accessible to you um, because that paint is the paint that is easiest to get like I've bought bottles of paints at, at conventions which I love but then trying to find it again to try to match stuff I painted before uh, if I run out it, it, it can be just a, such a hassle and if especially if you're starting out usually what uh, paint is available to you what's at the local hobby store that's what people around you are painting with it's usually better for the whatever climate you're in as well if if you have um, if you're in like a dry area or, or a, a very humid area like the different paints um, you know they have different finishes and different reactions to climate um, so generally whatever whatever locals are using is is you know good stuff and it also the stuff that's at your local store is the stuff that sells so it means that typically it tells me that hey this stuff is, other people have tested it tried it bought it used it and continue to use it if they're being stocked at your local game store so that's what I'm doing now I'm gonna start with the blue I've got the browns down actually I've got to do the neck this neck part too but I'm gonna start on this blue here and I'm gonna show you in terms of the, the blue layers when I paint a miniature, sometimes you're going to need to go over with your base coats, one or two coats, um, if one coat isn't sufficient, and sometimes it's not. Usually, you know, if you're, you're thinning your paints reasonably, like, you'll need a couple coats to get a nice solid color, that base coat color, like, even on here in the back where I finished it. It's not perfectly even. There's still some black showing through. I'll need a second coat, so I'll, I'll paint a couple colors on, let each color dry as I go, just to get the miniature done. Um, and so I'll, I've got a little bit of the blue there, um, but in terms of this brown here, so you can see a little bit of silver bled over into onto the blue, which I covered up. The, the, the silver showed up on this arm, which I covered up with the blue. You can't see it anymore, so it's okay if you're messy on the start. But 
I'm going to show you again, just the brown where I'm putting it, where it's going. Um, I'm because I painted this arm here with the blue, I'm not going to paint the brown on the glove until this blue is dry. So I'm going to paint the brown somewhere else. I'm going to, I'm going to try to, when I move around the model with different paints, try not to paint different colors um, next to each other that will be wet. Uh, because the water, the way it works, I, I know uh, y'all pr probably took high school science, you understand capillary action. That's kind of what's happening here. When, when you have uh, water soluble paint, water uh, thinned paint, the, if you have a, a section that's wet blue and a section that's wet brown, for example, um, the wet brown and the wet blue will blend together in weird spaces and just make everything look messy and awful. So try to work, you know, in areas that are dry, make sure your layers in between the paint as well. So if I've got to do two coats to get a good coat of coverage on my paint, I'll let the first coat completely dry before I add a second coat on it. Um, just so you have a good finish on the paint too. Uh, when what we have with paint is essentially a water soluble plastic. Um, and when it dries it, it's, it's a solid plastic. If you paint with its before it's fully set into the plastic, sometimes you get weird ridges and weird finishes and like maybe a section of dry paint will pull uh, off a section where it's not like quite dry and so it doesn't adhere well and so it'll pull off and you'll just, it'll, it's just a struggle. So work, uh, work on areas uh, that are fully dry when you put ne second coats on them. All right, thoughts on using a hair dryer for speeding up drying? That's a good question. I enjoy getting things done and sometimes I'll work in a batch. Um, but when I'm trying to get a single figure done completely and there's lots of stuff to do on that figure, I will, I will use a hair dryer. I'll try to use a hair dryer that has a cold setting first, just because especially with, um, especially with the plastic, you don't want to like make it too warm that it like warps the plastic. And the other thing I will try, try really hard to do, although sometimes I'll use, I'll use, you know, warm setting, but, um, is to keep the, 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 the pressure of the air getting from getting too close to the miniature, especially if you're waiting for washes to dry washes. I do have one, a wash on the, um, supply list for this workshop. That particular wash takes a long time to dry. So usually I'll apply it at the very end of a miniature. Let me take a little bit of silver and touch up. So I made a little bit of a mistake over there. I'm just gonna take a little bit of silver on top. I'm just gonna touch that on top. No one will barely notice it. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Um, but those washes take a long time to dry and sometimes they don't set quite well. And if you've got wind blowing at it, it's actually that, that air will push the wash out of the cracks and crevices where you want the shadow. So avoid that. Um, is what I would say, but I, I've used hair dryers. I've used uh, uh, the 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 heaters in my house. I have used mall dryers uh, when I was trying to get things done. When I used to work at a little store in a mall uh, where we had to get minis done, so I've I've used all sorts of hair dryers. This is a thing, um, which is really weird. Yes, I used a hand a hand dryer for for miniatures, but it. it as long as you keep the heat um, moderated on the miniature, you should be fine. So, any other questions? Any any other questions? Let's see, there's a reason I picked a black paint primer for this miniature to start with. Yes. Yeah, so, um, depending on what I want the outcome of the miniature to be, I'll pick the the primer color. Normally, almost a hundred, like like I'd say seventy five to eighty five percent of the time, I'll go with a black primer just because, especially if it's a model that, that I'm just starting on, I just want to get done. Um, black primer uh, hides your mistakes a little better. If there are areas that I can't reach a brush into, if I'm speed painting and trying to get things done, black is the color of shadow and uh, it'll just look like a shadow if I don't get paint in there perfectly or if the paint isn't exactly where it needs to be because I, I, I was speeding through it. Um, so black, black is a little bit more forgiving when it comes to primer colors. 
on white every mistake shows because all the colors show up so much brighter but if you're painting neon colored miniatures let's say um some teenagers with attitude who wear bright spandex uniforms let let's just throw it out there um White primer makes those colors pop really bright on that first or second coat, especially harder colors to paint like yellow. So I'm gonna add a little more brown to my palette because I need a little bit more brown um, on there. In terms of like when you load your paint onto your palette, um, use pea size amounts, like really small. You don't need a ton of paint on there. It looks like a lot when I actually spread it out. But when it comes to like actual amount of paint, it's not very much at all. Um, a little bit of paint, especially model paint, it goes a long way because it's so heavily pigmented and it has very little in terms of like fillers or binders. So, you know, start small and you can always add more onto your palette as you go. And it, it means that your paint, pots of paint will last a little longer too. Um, would I primarily use an airbrush in place of the dry? Uh, no, no, I, I don't. Airbrushes are not my thing. I don't paint with one. I used to own one. I sold it. I'm not, I don't like the compressor. I don't like maintenance of an airbrush. I think it's for me and what I use and how I paint, I'm a brush to model painter. Um, there are some really great people who are very skilled with a, an airbrush. And I used to just use my airbrush for like mostly base coats and stuff. It wasn't worth it for me and honestly when it comes to highlighting and burnishing on things like metallics um, I just I'm I'm more comfortable uh, with with a dry brush so uh, and also like they're expensive <laughs> they're really they're actually really expensive if you're really into miniature painting and you're 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 gonna go gung ho and you want to get an airbrush totally awesome like more power to you but I don't think I will ever make a tutorial online. I don't think I'll ever really run a workshop on airbrushing. Um, because I, I, my, my point of view when it comes to miniatures and, and me wanting to, to get people into the hobby, uh, using a really big, clunky, loud, expensive tool is, it, it's, it, it doesn't compare to a $4 makeup brush from the drugstore. So that, that's basically it. Um, oh, is there a reason why I keep using, putting my brush in my mouth? Um, so I rinse my brushes out in water and I am one of those, I'm, I'm a brush licker. So there's, there's two camps in a lot of hobby circles. One, one, one camp are brush lickers. The other are not. I kind of grew up in as a, as a hobbyist. My, I was formed by, uh, hobbyists who would lick their brush they would use they use a little bit of suction and they pull their brush point through through and train the bristles of the brush using their mouth um the paints are non-toxic so it's fine in terms of that uh but it it can lead to like having paint on your lips i've 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 left the house with paint on my lips i'll admit it not the greatest habit if you're concerned about like uh, what's in the paint and 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 that sort of thing but it it doesn't hurt you. Um, but there are other ways to actually build a point on the brush too. If you're looking to build a point and you're not into sucking your brush to, to kind of pull the brush bristles into a point, I'll show you real quick here. You can take your wet paper towel, just take a wet paper towel and you can rinse your brush. So when I, I rinse my brush, I'll dry it. Normally I'll put it in my mouth, pull the tip with my lips, but you can also just rinse your brush, take off the excess water on a dry paper towel and then just spin your brush on the wet paper towel and it'll also pull it into a point um, you want your brush to have a little bit of moisture you don't want your brush to be completely dry when you're painting uh, before you load the paint on it a, a little bit of moisture the water in the brush will actually um, because again water is attracted to water it'll pull the bristles together and make the point easier to hold um, so if you're finding that your bristles are kind of sp spreading out a little bit and you know your brush has a good point um, it might be that you're just painting with your bristles a little bit dry. So when I, when I suck the brush, I add a, there's a little bit of saliva in there to, to kind of moisten the brush. Um, and it also pulls it into a point. I wouldn't recommend it if you're starting out and you want to build a good hobby, hobby, good hobby habits. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but it, it's, it, it, it won't hurt you. Um, I look at what's in my paints often 
I, especially when I have a new paint, I'll look at the toxicity sheet of it, um, just to make sure that there's nothing in there that I don't want, that I'm not too concerned about. But hobby paint as a whole, especially um, if you're getting it from a reputable brand, they'll say on there, like, this is non-toxic or this conforms to this this particular sheet. You can always email the company, hey, can I see the toxicity sheet of your, your products? And they'll, they'll send it to you. Ah, what miniature is this? This is Omen drawn out of the Clank Acquisitions or Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated Upper Management Pack. So this is Omen. Um, this is the Omen character. He is a war. I think he's a war cleric. Um, if, I, if I'm remembering my Penny Arcade uh, Ack Inc. lore correctly, feel free to correct me in chat if I'm wrong. Yeah, Upper Management Pack. Um, so the browns are almost on there. The gloves are done. The boots are done. Just base coated. I'm going to touch up wherever I'm seeing some of the brown looking wonky or, or not even. But we're going to move right on to... We've done the, the silver on the weapons and the shoulder pads. We've done the browns. We've done the blues. The blue is applied in the same kind of manner uh, as the brown. But if you actually look at the art that was on the card and you look at my little starter mini... Some of the blues are actually lighter, so his sleeves and pants are a little bit lighter than his chest. And so I'm going to mix a blue to, to create that lightness. You don't have to buy a separate blue. This is something that I really want to emphasize. Use the paints you have. You don't have to buy like five blues to get five different blues. If you have black and white, it goes a long way. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to my palette here. I'm going to add a little bit of that blue back onto my palette because I'm running out. Again, just touches little drops of paint is all I'm using and I'm going to I'm going to blend on a new area I'm going to pull the paint from a different area I'm going to rinse my brush before I go into my white because if I use a white on something else I don't want to contaminate it with some of the blue I'm going to pull some of the white in now white is one of those colors where when you blend it with other colors so here's where I'm blending these two colors and I'm going to bring the blue into the white and add where I need to add just to get the shade that I'm happy with. So I'm gonna take this a little bit bluer and pull a little bit in and just spin it until it's got a color tone that, that I'm kind of happy with. And it's just gonna be a little bit lighter than the base coat I put on. The nice thing about having that base coat on, especially with lighter colors, is it'll give a nice foundation to it. If you try to paint a really light color on the black primer, it sometimes doesn't show up very nicely. Um, and you'll need like multiple coats. People who've painted yellow know this. Um, so uh, having that color, that, that base, base color down first kind of will, will help that color show up a little bit more. All right. Ooh, I'm so glad. Oh, it's Sarah. Um, yeah, so Sarah, uh, she's saying Clank Legacy is great. Ah, my family had a great time with it. I enjoyed the game so much and um i i if you're a clank fan um the the legacy box actually has the bonus of being a great storage box for all your clank stuff like you take out the insert you can fit everything in there all the contents of all the other expansions so if you're looking for a storage box you can also stick stuff in there and it's a big box which is really nice kind of handy um speaking of storage if you hang out here on twitch right after this workshop Greg Spence of The Broken Token will be doing a, a kind of like a workshop uh, showing you ways to customize the ins insides of your box for this thing. If you've got games with miniatures in them, if you've got games with lots of cards in them, if you've got games where you're just like, man, I've got a lot of expansions for this, um, but I want to keep it in the base box, that's something you'll definitely want to hang out for. And if you're here, you're probably a little on the crafty side. Um, that's that's happening in about an hour from now. So do 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 hang out with us. Um, any other questions in chat? Let's have a look. What size is your brush? Oh, my, so this is a base coat brush. This is actually a fancy brush. This is a Series 7 brush, but you can use like any watercolor brush. Uh, I've used synthetic brushes for, for base coating, especially. I'll often use like, I'll often reach for a, a synthetic brush just because it has a nice snap to it and it's a little easier to, to load up and maintain but this is this is a big brush this is a size two if you can't see on the paint all over the handle there's the number there's the number two this is a size two it's it's when you go to the store and you look at miniature brushes this is actually probably bigger than most most brushes um 
And I like, I like the big brush just because it holds more paint and it holds more moisture. And so the point is really good on it. Even though it's like, it feels big, the point can still get a lot of the details. Uh, this particular brush um, can paint some pretty good details and can, can apply paint with, with some precision. Um, with a little practice, mind you, it, it does take a little bit of time. When you're starting out, uh, we are, you're using, chances are you're using muscles in your hands, in your wrists, in your fingers. You probably haven't used in a long time. Um, like who, who writes with a pencil anymore, right? Uh, and so the, it takes a little bit of time to develop the, the nerves and the, the muscles again, so that you have the control. If you're, if you're starting out and your hands are shaking and that sort of thing, that's probably what's happening um, is you're just, you're building muscles. You're building very, very tiny muscles, but you're building muscles. And so you've got to take care of your hands and your wrists, stretch, take breaks, um, hydrate, you know, it, treat it like a workout because it, it is for these fine motor control muscles. It, it, it is a bit of a workout. So I'm getting this lighter tone blue on my miniature and and that'll be my base coats for the blue i like big brush i can't lie <laughs> yes yes i like i you know i'm i'm one of those people who loves done miniatures done is my favorite color of miniature it is my favorite thing like the feeling of accomplishment um and i'll talk about varnishing uh in like a second i saw a question pop up in chat about it um done is the color of 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 the best miniatures and getting there with a tiny brush is so long and so not fun um so i would rather honestly i would rather get it get it done looking good looking good from tabletop distance tabletop distance is a really big thing if you're new and you're looking at your miniature and you're this close to it i can get real real close you can kind of almost maybe see my nose under the camera overhead here. Um, if you're looking at your miniature and it's like six inches away from your nose, it's going to look different than when you put the miniature down and you play with it. So take your miniature. If you're, you're sitting there, you're spending the time, you're like, ah, this is just mistakes, mistakes. Ah, this, this is awful. This looks terrible. Take, take a second, give yourself some time to, to, you know, give yourself some space to be okay with what you're doing. Put the miniature down at arm's distance away and look at it on the table. If you can't see that that little mistake or error, nobody else can. It'll be fine. So I've got the lighter blue all over on the legs and the sleeves, but I'm leaving this blue area uh, on his chest and back, dark blue. Now, if you notice like on this miniature this is a white cross but i painted it blue here that's because we're going to be painting it over with the white i'm not going to stress about that um cross if i get blue on it great paint is its own white out i know another color is going on it when i'm bumping up to an already painted area that's when i'm going to spend time be a little more careful but especially with base coats um you know just get it on if you know that area is going is like in the way or on top of especially if it's like in the way or on top of something um get get the paint on there when you clean up the borders with that second paint you can actually having that base coat on there too will make it easier again kind of like when i talked about over painting the borders so it's a little more forgiving uh, i'm crafty but i'm not skilled with the brush you know what it's it's just time you can i think that um, there is, now I'm painting on the flesh on, on Omen's head here. I think there is this, this idea that, um, you have to be like, like artistic to do this. This isn't artistic. I'm not an artistic person. If you ask me to draw a picture of something, I was, it would look really bad. Um, I'm not an illustrator. I'm not an artist. I am a kind of a, uh, enthusiastic hobbyist. And I'm a crafty person, um, but it's just about uh, recognizing that painting miniatures is like paint by number. It's like coloring in a coloring book, but the borders are in three dimensions. Um, and also that if you understand the basic techniques, the, 
highlighting and washing and base coating, which is what we're covering today. I showed you how to dry brush already. I'm showing you how to base coat now. And then we're going to do some washes after. That'll take you like so far. You don't actually need to have a super tiny brush to do the little things with those three techniques. That'll go a, a long way and it'll get you, it'll progress your miniatures and you'll be really surprised at the results. So, um, Let's see here. So I've got the flesh toned down. I added a little bit of flesh. I, I base coated it first on top of the black because flesh, especially, especially lighter skin flesh tones, they'll need a couple coats. So, so give yourself that space. It might take a little bit of time if you're painting along and you aren't as far as I am. It's because I got a little bit of a head start. Um, but we're like, we're, we're making progress. We're at like the, the 35 minute mark. Um, we got about 40 minutes to go here and, and we're looking pretty good. I th I'm pretty comfortable. I think we can finish. So base coats down, flesh coats down. I'm going to do the hair in one of the colors here. I've got like this ochre yellow color. It's like a brownish, brownish yellow color. And I, you know what? Um, I think I'm going to choose this one. This is a rucksack tab. Um, and I'm going to use that to do his hair cause it's kind of yellowy on the art on the box. Um, but again, your miniature, you do what you want with it. Take a tiny amount on the tip of my brush. This is not a lot, right? I'm gonna apply it down, that's all. It looks like a lot when it's spread out, especially on a white palette, but it's not, just a little bit of, little bit of paint. Um, and I'm just gonna take that, take wet and brush, pull the excess water off it, just to, to give some moisture to the brush. I'm gonna take a couple drops that are already on my palette and just spread it out on my palette. It'll pick up some moisture from underneath and then We'll get this hair on and I might need to do a couple coats on this. That's fine. Uh, I'll work on a different area while we let that hair dry. But if you can tell here, I overpainted the border of the flesh. It's the same um, concept as overpainting the borders of the fabric and the armor and the leather um, because I don't want there to be a weird black, black line around his hair. And if, if I overpaint the border a little bit, it's, it, it'll, it'll be easier to, to kind of, camouflage that um, here. So actually you can kind of see here at the top of his head. I, I went right to the the sculpt edge as opposed to going over on the border. And so painting to that edge is a little bit harder. And even even it like with my with my nice pointed brush and and the fact that I have, you know, a bit of experience, it's a little bit harder and more to kind of get that edge. If I had overpainted that flesh all the way over into the hair a little more, if I had extended that border, this would be a whole lot easier. So learn from me, learn from my mistakes and, and use these techniques uh, to, to get your miniature done a little bit quicker than this is happening. So um, let's have a look here. Um, and we've got hair going on. Any other questions in chat? Let me have a look. It looks like, do I have a recommended brand of brushes? Okay. That's a, I buy brushes from all over the place. I'll buy my brushes from, from my hobby store. You know, uh, a lot of hobby companies make brushes. Army painter makes a great, especially a really tiny brush. They have like a masterclass brush. It's, it's really interesting because army painters brushes have these triangular handles. They're really nice to hold, especially they're a lot thicker than a lot of other uh, brushes. Um, so if your hands shake or they're, they're larger, if you have like big man hands, um, like my partner does, he's a six foot four, he's a giant. Um, those brushes are really nice to hold and it's a little bit easier and to stay steady with like a, a thicker handle and to grip it. So you're not like holding this tiny thing and then shaking with it. Um, the Citadel makes a great line of brushes. Um, the series seven brush is a watercolor brush. I like it because they last a long time for me. Um, but they're, they're pretty pricey. I wouldn't necessarily say start there. If you're going to start, start with the brushes. When you get your hobby supplies, you get your paints, uh, grab your brushes from your hobby store. Um, and usually there that if you're starting out, it's a little easier because they label the brush for the purpose. So instead of saying, you know, I need a series seven number two, which is like kind of, ephemeral is a concept. You can say, I need a dry brush. I need a base coat brush. I need a standard brush. I need a detail brush. 
the names of the brushes will be on the brush. So what you're trying to do um, is on there. So it's a little bit more user friendly, if, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, let's have a look here. All right. So their hair is basically on, basically on. I still got that border on there. I might, you know what? I might, because the flesh isn't on perfect, I'm going to overpaint the border of the hair and I'm just going to make the, make the flesh meet the hair. And if he, he gets a little extra hair, hair is really fun because you can actually add extra hair to a model if it's not as super, super crisply sculpted too. This is pretty crisp, but it doesn't look as weird if hair should be there, if color is uh, overpainted on the border. It looks pretty good. Anyways, I do the same with eyebrows. Sometimes mo models won't have eyebrows sculpted on. And if you paint the eyebrow on, it's just, it's just a line of color um, and it doesn't look weird. So, flesh is done, hair is done, brown is done, blues are looking done. Um, let's get to the, we'll do the chest, because I think that's a really big focal point. Every miniature has a big focal point. I'm going to put some gold on my palette. Um, when it comes to the, the way that I'm going to handle this particular cross, um, I did a gold border on it because that was that's what it looks like in the art, but the gold isn't actually sculpted on, so we can play with it a little bit. So I'm going to actually paint the entire cross gold and then paint the white on top of the cross and fill it in however I feel. And it's nice because these two colors, white and gold together, if you overpaint the white in a certain section you need to touch up the gold, the gold goes on really easily. And if you overpaint the gold into the white, white covers the gold pretty well. So, so they're nice to work together in this respect. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my gold. Metallic paints have a little bit of a different texture. Um, so it might be that you need to do a couple layers to get the thick coat. Cause really it's not the color of the paint so much as it is these little tiny flex inclusions in the paint that that make it metallic so sometimes you need to do a couple coats um depending on how fine those thing those little metallic inclusions are on your in your in your brand of paint uh someone in chat asked early about if i varnish my paints yeah or my models yes so i varnish them with a couple things depending on the model depending on what kind of finish i want depending on how how much detail i painted on what kind of highlighting and, and techniques i used on it uh, I varnish most of my miniatures for just plain handling with hardware store matte, matte varnish uh, in the aerosol can. It's really generally pretty user friendly, pretty easy. It doesn't frost very often. Now frosting is a thing that happens to uh, matte coats where um, if it's too humid or it goes on too thick, for out of an aerosol can especially, it creates this like, it looks like it's been ice like covered in ice like this thin layer of like n it, it stops being tr like clear and it looks it looks frosted it just it looks like there's a layer of frost on the model um and that happens sometimes and it happens more with my favorite uh finishing product which is a product called testers gel coat or spray lacquer i think is what they label it as if you actually look at the barcode area it says dull coat on there d-u-l-l-c-o-t-e they're actually, you know, Rust-Oleum Rust owns uh, the company Testers, so it's actually the same company who makes them. But Testers Zelco comes in this, these tiny cans. They're they're a little more, they're a lot more expensive when you compare it, like by volume and size and stuff. But that stuff has really, it like really mats everything down. Um, but it smells like if you're gonna do any aerosol work, do it in a well ventilated area. But that's that particular stuff smells like, like cancer like uh, but in my brain having been a miniature painter for a long time i have equated its awful chemically toxic smell with progress <laughs> and so i feel happy when i when i get to spray it and smell it um because the the fineness of the matte coat it's like it's so matte because the way matte coat goes on it goes on in a, a kind of a, a like like a layer of paint right uh, and how it becomes matte is that it has these really tiny, fine cracks. It, it basically cracks on itself. So instead of reflecting light, it absorbs light in those tiny cracks. And so things don't look shiny. Um, Tester's Dull Coat has like a, it, 
I feel like its formulation is just for really, really fine, finer cracks, finer cracks even than the regular like matte coat. And that stuff particularly um, makes highlights and blends look really good. It's kind of like a an Instagram filter on your miniatures. So I, I say that stuff for really special things. Um, because it's kind of expensive and I'll, and I'll use the hardware stuff for like most of my board game pieces and things I, I handle a lot. Um, you know, regular matte coat is great for that. And I, and I'll also often use it as like a clear primer as well. Um, it works really well, uh, because again, with all those micro fissures in the, in the surface of the, the final coat that those micro fissures, they cling to paint and kind of in the same way that primer does. So it works really well if you just, you have a, say a, a model that that base coat is, like the plastic itself is the color that you want the base coat to be, like Power Rangers. Um, those are really good to use a, a clear primer for because then you don't need to buy multiple cans or you don't have to wait for all those layers to dry too. So you can actually take advantage of that property. Uh, that's because I'm so high on the beams. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just, I, I've been painting for so long and I've painted so many models that I've equated that with like, like accomplishment. That's the, that's what accomplishment smells like. It just smells like toxic paint. And that's, that's probably not a very good thing to be perfectly honest with you. Um, so well ventilated areas, same with priming, just generally take care of yourselves. I say a lot on these streams like hey every hour or so stretch your neck stretch your wrists stretch your arms look at something that isn't like six inches away from your nose stretch your eyes um because of the fact that we have to take care of ourselves same goes for for the uh the 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 fumes that come from these aerosol products we do have to like just be conscious of it ah uh, let's see here um any other questions uh that looks good though. Let me have a peek and see if Desiree has pointed out any questions to me. That looks good. Everyone looks happy. I'm so glad. Soy Lancer. Pavlovian fumes. Yes, Pavlovian fumes. Good. That's actually a really kind of good comparison. Um, whew. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to the handle over here uh, of the mace. So we're, we are not working with like a huge spectrum of paints, right? I've got like maybe, I've got a black or and white, which are, I think, like essential paints. I, they're so essential. I have small paint pots of them from the, from the hobby store, but I also buy them in these big, big bottles at, from the art store. Uh, look for, what you're looking for is a uh, acrylic paint that's, that's described as fluid acrylic. That, that uh, texture I guess it has no fillers. It's not meant to like have texture when it's applied on a canvas. It works really well for miniatures. I buy black and white in those quantities because I, I paint enough to, to warrant it. Um, because I use them on just about every miniature and they're always handy to have. Uh, let's see here. When you smell the colors, you're winning. Yeah, you know what? Yes. Listen, um, I agree. So I'm going to start adding the white onto this, this, chest piece over here and I'm going to take that white onto other things to finish the details. So I touched up the handle here and I'm going to take that white and just start painting on the chest. Let me see if I can, if I can push this in a little bit more. Um, and, and adjust the focus just a little bit. Ooh, that's blurry. Ooh, that's extra blurry. Is that bad? better. Oh, found it. Found it. Okay. Um, and so what I'm going to be doing is just taking little dots, little edges, and I'm going to take that gold, the white into the gold and kind of go as let, let my brush do the work. Cause I painted the edges on the edge of the cross where the, the chest is. And those will, that part will show through. And I'm just going to kind of like bring the white across and create the, recreate the shape on the inside, just like keeping the edges of the gold. It doesn't need to be perfect. Trust me. When this is on the when this miniature is on the table, uh, the details will will pop and the mistakes will not show. But this is kind of important because uh, it'll let the gold detail show on the edges, while while reading is very white. It, again, don't worry about like every line being perfectly smooth. When you pull the miniature away from your nose after you've applied this. As long as you're happy with the way it looks on the table, that's all you need to, to 
to really, really concern yourself with. So, um, there we go. Uh, and I'm just gonna add the white. Be mind, being mindful that I do want to keep some of the gold on the edges. Um, but like, don't be stressed out about it. If you're like, oh, I, I got too much white on there, I want to repaint the gold, take a small fine detail brush. You can just poke little dots where the gold should be. Um, instead of trying to draw perfectly straight lines, I like little dots because then you can like draw a couple dots on. So let's say here, um, you can poke a little few, a couple dots on and then connect them with more dots and then just pull a line through to connect the dots together as opposed to trying to like freehand a perfect line. It's, it's really challenging actually. Um, it's like trying a perfect circle on a three dimensional model. It's a little, it's a little stressful and you don't need that kind of stress in your life. So dots work really well on miniatures to, to create the impression of that line without actually having to, to make perfect lines. So let's zoom out a little bit. Let's take this model away from your nose and here's what it looks like on the like what it would look like on the tabletop at a distance, right? The gold is still reading. You, you've seen what it looks like, you know, up close. The lines aren't perfect. Everything isn't perfect. But when you put it down, that's when you want it to show. And it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, if there's any other places on the gold I want to touch, I'll add that gold now. I'll throw some on the top of the mace here. I think, I think I'll put it on the mace. And I will add it, let's see, I'll add it on the, the mace bottom here as well. So I'm just going to touch that gold on there. It's got those final details. It just, when you paint the little things, even if it's not perfect, it just, the model looks more finished, right? The little details, picking out the little, little bits here and there. If you, if you have the ability to just like, Hey, this, this little detail that can, can pass a silver. If I pick that out with gold, that'll, that'll show up a little better it'll look a little more done. It'll look a little more complete. Um, and let's have a look here. So he's got eyebrows. He's got eyes. I'm, I'm not feeling eyes today. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. The way this miniature stands on the tabletop, the way his brow ridge sits over his face, you can't see eyes from the tabletop. I can't see eyes from the tabletop. The way this model stands, we're not going to paint eyes, but we're going to put some shade on his face. We're going to put some shade um, on his leather, we'll use the same shade, uh, just to, to give the impression that the sockets are shaded. So here we go. I'm gonna take my dry palette and I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put some wash on there. Um, if you have trouble seeing the wash, it, it'll just look like water, but really this is, this is a strong tone. I'm gonna thin it out with a little bit of water cause I don't want it to be as heavy, um, on the face. And then I'm gonna use it straight on the, all the brown leather on on Omen here. Actually, ooh, before I get that on there, there are these details on his boots that I want to get on. So here you can kind of see these, these like cloth wraps. Um, I'm going to do that on this model with the white again, not too, not too stressed about it. Uh, I can mix a little bit of brown into that white, or you can use like an ivory color as well. Um, that will work in kind of the same way. And then you can, you can just, you can just kind of replicate that. Um, without having to buy a second paint. So I'm going to take a little bit of my brown, put it in on a palette area here. Let's drop it there. Take a rinse my brush, go into my white, take a little bit of white, um, a lot of white probably, because a little bit of color in white goes a long way. And I'm going to make this nice, like, light, light brown. It'll, it'll read a little bit ivory or, and that's nice, fine. I'm just going to paint the bandages on his, on his, the cloth areas on these boots here. Let's get that light, light brown on. I'm not going to be stressed too much about getting it perfect. If I mess up a little bit, it'll just look like cloth in a different sculpt. Again, um, with the way that these miniatures are sculpted, a lot of miniatures are quite forgiving, especially if you're going to put wash on them afterwards. And I'm going to put wash on anything that is brown on this model to give it the shade. And it'll, it'll compensate for a lot on the miniature. So I'm not going to stress too much about getting it perfect on the model. It'll just look like different areas of cloth. Um, and especially where the, especially where the, the edges are, the shade will settle there as kind of darker and make that shadow. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to be too worried about it is what I'm saying. And I don't think you need to be, if you want to stress, like if you want to take the time and do it really clean and really perfect, 
go ahead. It's your model. Enjoy the process. Whatever makes you happy on the model is the right way. But I want to show you easy, light, accessible techniques because really model painting should be just fun time to hang around. So like focus on something that is is for you, for you to enjoy. And it's one way that you can actually enjoy your board games by yourself. Um, if your board game doesn't have a solo mode, it, it you know, you can paint up you can do these techniques on meeples. You can dry brush your meeples, make them look metallic. You can do all sorts of fun things with your games by yourself if you're into crafting. So, uh, I was thinking about starting some putties, says Darth Moogle. Uh, I have so many Morphin Ranger Kickstarter. I can afford to mess them up. They're, you know, the putties are so much fun to paint. You paint them so many ways. You can try different techniques on them. And it's really interesting. I really enjoy... Ironically, I think putties are some of my favorite things to paint because you get that feeling of accomplishment because you can finish a whole ton of them in very little time. You get to play around with different techniques. Like I started doing some some weird uh, wet blending techniques with them. I started playing with like shading uh, and like comic book style shading on them. You don't feel bad <laughs> when you you and you have a whole bunch of the same model. Um, so I, I really enjoy uh, painting putties and like, like enjoy the process of it. I think that's really great. Um, let's see here. I'm really neat at painting and I started painting with Power Rangers and it was really fun just to have you take the time and go over mistakes. Yeah, it's really fun to go over your mistakes and, and you recommend it to everyone. Dog in my lens. Yes, it's awesome. Um, like the thing is, especially when you're just starting out to if there's one piece of advice I would I would share with you if this like if you're getting onto your first miniatures uh don't stop like don't don't fixate on a single miniature and try to get it perfect no it's like call it done call it done for now if you need to work on something else and then like maybe a few weeks or a few months down the line when you've kind of developed a little more um, experience with your paints when your hands don't shake as much because you've strengthened them through all this hobby painting exercise um over time you 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 can go back and pick out the details you couldn't before and really enjoy that process um and it's really fun because then you can like level up your your models as you level up your skills but take breaks from them you will never get better as a painter working on the same model over and over and over again you progress as a painter by working on different models on different projects and moving forward and advancing getting it done um, Timothy DM asked if I thin my metallics, uh, kind of, yes. So, uh, when I dry brush them, they're kind of already thinned because they're applied through a, a method that applies very thin layers. Um, when it comes to using my wet palette, yes, I do. I also thin, thin my layer, uh, my, my metallics out. They tend to dry a little bit faster because there's, uh, the inclusions, the metallic flakes in them. Um, means that there's less moisture in the paint so like I can do a thin coat and then do a second thin coat um, and I'll, I'll use thinned layers of paint uh, metallics on metallics especially I find that metallics especially um, tend to be more likely to look clumpy um, that's something I'm always very conscious of it's why I dry brush most of my metallics it's why I will thin my metallics on a wet palette first because they can look very clumpy um, all right, so bandages are done. And before I get on there, I really do want to make sure that the paint, before I put my wash on this model, is dry. Um, I'm going to paint on the wash now. So I'm going to thin this wash for the face because it's a kind of, it's a darker brown. Um, and I'm going to apply it and it's going to sink into the cracks and crevices of the model. So this is just a quick shade. This is the, the bottled stuff. The stuff in the can doesn't work the same way. So if you're looking at like army painter stuff and you're like, can, it looks like a lot. I'm going to a lot of models to paint. It's different. It's a completely different formulation. This stuff is a water soluble acrylic. I think the stuff in a can is actually a varnish. Um, so it, it has a completely different property. You, if you want to you know, clean it out, you need like solvents and stuff. It's, it's different. Um, and I like the stuff in the bottle. Um, especially for these smaller projects. So I put a little bit down. I'm going to take some water out of my water cup on my brush and I'm going to drop it down on there next to it and kind of like mix a little bit in the middle, kind of meet them in the middle a little bit just to thin them out. And when I'm working on a coffee can lid so it's black. 
if I'm not happy with how how dark it's coming, I'll just add more water to it and take a wet brush and pull the excess wash off. But let's have a look and see here. Um, yeah, no, that looks fine. It, it. I'm just gonna apply it into the face here and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And what I really want, I want it to stick into the cracks and crevices in the eye sockets, around the mouth, in the ears. That's kind of where I'm gonna focus on and I don't want it to puddle too heavily around the flat areas of the face, the forehead and stuff. I'm gonna let that dry. And then we're gonna apply the more of this wash straight onto the rest of the model. It's gonna go everywhere that is brown. Um, this particular wash, I like a lot. I, I buy multiple bottles of it, I'll stock up. Um, I use it on, basically if it's warm toned um, and kind of in the mid to dark tones, it's a good, like eight, covers 80% of, of my shades. Um, it doesn't look good on blue, which is why I'm gonna to try to avoid the blue areas on the model with this wash, but it looks good on greens, it looks good on reds, it looks good on on anything that's got a warmer tone to it. The yellows, depending on the shade of the yellow, if it's like a mid-range, kind of slightly on the darker side, if it's more into the brown range, it looks really good on those. And what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna apply it, and you can kind of see a little bit on the scarf. Let me change the, fo the focus here a little bit so you can see it nice and close. Um, there we are. And, and I'm gonna apply it into the skirt here and you can see right away how it just settles in the cracks and it creates shade. So I'm gonna do a little area right here and you can see it and I'll do the belt area too. And it just settles there. And then when it dries, it shrinks up a little bit and it concentrates those pigments into those recessed areas even more. And it makes this really nice shadow effect without you actually having to paint on shadows. Um, so I like washing a lot. I reach for this bottle of wash for a lot of models. Um, it's a nice handy, it's a nice handy thing. If you don't have this product, it's not available to you easily. You can also take like a dark brown paint, um, thin it down with a little bit of water, add a drop of dish soap. Um, and I'm going to be doing that, covering that a little bit more in tomorrow's uh, advanced kind of tutorial. That drop of dish soap breaks the surface tension and it helps the paint settle in the cracks and crevices. Um, and it moves the pigment into those areas. You can make a wash on your own just by thinning your paints down and adding a touch, tiny, tiny, tiny drop of soap um, in there. And if you're brush slicker, trust me, you will know that you uh, didn't rinse your brush out very well if you do that. So... Uh, there's another reason why you don't want to, you might, if you're, if you're able to, you might not want to pick up that habit, but won't hurt ya. Ah, thank you, Frankie Pugs. Have fun. I hope you enjoy RenCon. Uh, let me know in chat. What other things are you attending? What are the workshops you're looking at? What are, what are the things you're excited to check out? Um, there's a lot of things happening. There's a lot of demos. If you've done any demos so far or are looking to sign up to do demos, let me know what games you're interested in demoing because I, I want to see what people are, are excited about this con. A lot of awesome people did, did pulled a lot of stuff together to make this happen. And I'm just, I'm just so excited to be a part of it. Um, and I want to see what people are excited about, you know, and, and find out what, what, what they're really apt to do. Um, let's see here. How do I prevent the tone from leaving spots? Yeah, uh, so applying it thin will help and also moving it around while it's wet with a wet brush. Um, if you find that as you apply it, you, you have these puddles of spots, I'll rinse my brush out, take the excess water off, keep a little bit of moisture in the bristles and I'll touch the tip of my bristles into the wash. So you can kind of see how it's puddled into this crack here. I'm gonna touch my bristles into it and you can watch the, the the wash just pull into the bristles and I'm kind of kind of like a paper towel and it pulls away and it pulls up it pulls out the excess you can do that with with like areas that are flat that have these puddling effect or spotted effect that's what what you you can do to address that that kind of weird effect at the end so I've got the wash on uh, on the browns I gotta do the boots I did the face, uh, and I'm gonna put the wash all over everything. I'm gonna put the boots on the on the cloth too, and it'll look dirty, and that's cool. Uh, this wash, when you you get it on really light colors, it kind of looks like dirt and, and grime, and you know it's on his boots. Of course, it'd kind of be 
dirty. It's not going to be pristine. Nobody wears white when they're adventuring um, for this reason. And so I'm going to add that onto there. And just in, and, and then it'll add dimension. Uh, when we paint miniatures, and, and this might touch on some of the stuff I'm doing tomorrow, we're essentially painting on the illusion of light and shadow onto a miniature. Uh, that's kind of where you, when you start from like, hey, the base coats, and then you have like dry brushing, which adds kind of highlight, which is the illusion of light onto the miniature. And then when you do sh tones and shades and you know what I'm doing now with washes, um, that adds the illusion of shadow. Um, as you progress in miniature painting, um, you learn techniques that improve the ability to paint light and shadow, essentially. How well you can blend colors to create the illusion of light or the illusion of shadow. Um, and that's how you get the different styles, because it's, it's, it's still just putting paint on a model, but the different techniques just let you play with that illusion a little bit differently. And so that's kind of what advanced techniques are. In terms of tomorrow's workshop, if you're interested in signing up or stopping by and checking it out, I wanted to emphasize that it's not that I'm doing anything that is like really hard, um, but the concepts I'm teaching in that course have to do with understanding where light and shadow fall on a model. And that's a skill that's kind of developed over time. You can definitely, if you're new and you're like in the dry brush wash phase, it's really, it'll, I think it'll be a useful workshop to check out just because you'll still learn something. You'll take something away from it. You'll understand how shadow and light, um, fall on a miniature and how can, and different ways to, to kind of paint that onto the miniature. Um, so it's not that I'm doing anything hard and not, I'm not, uh, using special equipment or doing anything like that. I'm just, I'm just studying the miniature in a different way to kind of fake shadows and fake light on there. So it's going to be a fun time. Um, there we are. So I've got the wash on now, if there's anything I can do, I've got to let this wash dry before I do anything else. Um, we've only spent like an hour on this miniature and it looks pretty good. This is, this miniature is the one I kind of pre-painted ahead of the, the con. This miniature is the one we painted in real time in an, an hour. Um, I probably just take a, my detail brush and do the belt buckle on this miniature uh, and, and put the white in his teeth. That's it. That's the only thing. So I'm hoping this miniature, I'm going to shake it while we talk. I'm hoping this miniature dries um, so I can show you how I'm doing. I'll do that. But it really, we're going to, we're going to end in about seven minutes um, and then leave some room for Greg Spence of Broken Token to show you how to customize the inside of your boxes. But um, that, this, these are not hard techniques. I believe in the core of my heart that you can accomplish this. I'm going to be hanging out in the discord, um, over time, uh, over this weekend to, to chill. I'll be painting, posting pictures on what I'm working on. Feel free to jump in, in the different channels. If you see me in the lobby painting, or you see me in like the Power Rangers group or the Clank group painting, stay hi, show me your miniatures. I'd love to see what you're working on. I think it's really cool and fun and, and yeah, chat with me. I'll be around. Uh, and then again, tomorrow we're going to have, uh, another painting workshop um later in the evening as well as the power rangers just wait panel um where i get to talk about uh like making the game with scott and jonathan and a couple people who you know you may have seen around in our groups genie and dan um who were around during the first kickstarter like i i wasn't i wasn't with renegade at times so i'm really excited to hear those stories too so if you're a power rangers fan that's gonna be really fun um Thank you so much, uh, Desiree. She posted a link into the Twitch chat right now. I would really love and appreciate if you could fill out the form. Uh, it helps me just so that if we do something like this again in the future at a different, like say another Renegade Con in the future, um, or just my streams, if we're doing more streams, uh, painting miniatures, it really helps me to know what's useful, what was helpful, what, what you were hoping to see more of, um, just so that I can I can make these better for you. So if you fill in that form, uh, I mentioned at the top of the show, I will draw from the people who give me a real email address um, and I'll send you one of my favorite dry brushes. So uh, if you if you want to go over and fill out the link that is in Twitch chat from Desiree there, 
That will help me a lot. Oh, okay. You know what? Mm, I think I can, I think I can do, I think I can do the, the teeth. So I'm going to take my, my teeny tiny brush and I'm going to do the teeth and I'm going to see if I can touch on a little bit of silver into this, the belt buckle. But I, if I can't, I won't stress. I'm just basically doing little dots in the mouth, giving the impression of teeth. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. It's got teeth on one side. That's fine. It'll settle in the cracks and crevices a little bit and, and fill in, but I'm not going to like go crazy over making sure the teeth are all completely perfect. There's the teeth. You'll see the, that from the tabletop and that's cool to me. Um, so there teeth done. Maybe belt buckle, maybe belt buckle. Let's see if we got time. I got four minutes. I can do a belt buckle. I got four minutes. Let's race. Uh, let's have a look here. Silver wet palette right out of the pot. And I'm, I'm taking tiny amounts. This is like, these are super small amounts because it's a super small area I'm painting with the silver. And I'm just going to touch the silver onto the belt buckle. I'm not even pressing, like I'm not trying to paint the line on. I'm basically letting the bristles deposit paint. I'm just making little dots and letting the bristles, if they touch the miniature where, where it's raised, because this is sculpted, I'm just doing little dots and the paint is just depositing on there with those little dots. I'm not painting the line. I'm just tapping little tiny, barely touched taps um, onto the belt buckle to create that silver pickup on the miniature. Bam, belt buckle, done, oh, done. Done is my favorite color, I'm so excited. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna show, pull this out a little bit. There, can you can you even tell which one I spent the hour doing and which one I spent like three hours working on ahead of this stream just to give you an example of what it's gonna look like. You, you probably can and that's perfect. That's, that's the goal. Um, I'm so glad you were able to join me today. Thank you so much. Do check out the Renegade Con um, face, uh, the Renegade Con website on the Renegade Game Studios webpage, www.renegadegames.com. We'll get you there. You just hit the top bar. It says Renegade Con. Um, check out all the awesome programming happening. I hope I'll see you tomorrow. Stop by Discord, drop me a hello. And uh, make sure you remember Renegades. Don't forget, play your game. I will see you later. Ooh.